Well, it's looking like Vasil Lomachenko versus George Cambosis. Where does that leave Shakur Stevenson in the whole scheme of things? That's what I want to talk about in this video. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about it. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. And it looks like we shall get another fight 2024. You have promoters. You have networks. Bob Arum, top rank. They are trying to get their schedule together. Couple fights. No, not too many. Arter Better be of Caleb Smith in January. But another fight that they're trying to get done is George Cambosis, former unified champion versus another former unified champion in Vasily High Tech Lomachenko. And they're talking about finalizing that fight for the IBF strap. So me, you know, in terms of this fight, you guys see it on ESPN. It says sources Lomachenko Cambosis. IBF title bout is being finalized. Vasil Lomachenko and George Cambosos in the process of finalizing a deal for the IBF a lightweight strap April or May in Australia, right? And that's basically what this is saying. This would be at a 135. Lomachenko is 35 years old, fighting at 135. And Cambosis is kind of coming off a disputed performance against Maxi Hughes. You know, and some would even argue that he lost the fight. However, he did beat Teofimo, the guy that beat Lomachenko. So I really don't have a problem with this fight. You know, where Cambosis is, like, to be honest, this fight was not surprising to me because it was already supposed to happen. Let me explain. And make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, Best in the Business. So Lomachenko... He was going to fight George Cambosis previously, but due to the political climate, his country of Ukraine, they were at war with Russia, right? So during this time, he decided it would be best to make himself available as, you know, a 30 year old man and sit this one out. And instead of fighting Cambosis, that fight later went to Devin Haney, who was just looking for big opportunities. And Devin Haney has never looked back since. Devin Haney's just been on a steady incline. And it's cool to see for Dev, because at the end of the day, Devin Haney was one of those names where he was calling out names. He was like a boogeyman, or he was calling out people. He wanted to fight people, but people had all these excuses not to fight him. As a result, you know, he was out of the mix, but he kept barking up the trees, eventually got Jorge Linares, a former champion. He eventually got a fight with Jojo Diaz, an Olympian, U.S. Olympian. And then he eventually got the Cambosis fight. Needless to say, he beat Cambosis very convincingly both times you know the first there was it was good for Devin because the first fight was more just becoming a champion boxing smartly and doing your thing you know working behind the jab the second Devin used his size advantage and he he used a little bit more force to beat Cambosis and Cambosis fair play to him George Cambosis came clean and said Devin's just a huge talent I lost to the better man, you know, so I can respect people who take their lumps in that way and credit to Devin Haney. That's pretty much two opponents who just conceded that Devin was the better man. Regis Progray recently versus Devin Haney and also George Cambosis. They just gave props like Regis Progray said I was at the fight. Regis Progray said that MF are good, that mofo good. I can't say nothing else, but he's good. You know, I didn't expect him to be as good as he really was. He's better than I thought, you know, and Cambosis is more of the same. And to this day, Cambosis is giving props to Devin Haney. So definitely great to see when people just keep it a buck. Because so many times you have people who lie and try to deceive the public like this guy sucks and it was a robbery, you know, things like that. So fair play to George Cambosis. Devin did his thing, beat Cambosis. 
later relinquished all these belts because these are the belts that he won and he was the full WBC champion and he relinquished all the belts in moving up. Now he's at 140. Devin Haney's also been on wax saying he's not coming back to 140. So those belts get dispersed throughout the 135 pound division. We've already seen that in Shakur Stevenson versus Edwin De Los Santos. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I have some thoughts on how does Shakur fit into this whole puzzle piece, right? With George Cambosis likely fighting Lomachenko. I mean, it's all but announced. They're just figuring out the last parameters. This is also confirmed by top ranked Hall of Fame promoter Bob Arum. Vasil Lomachenko, he's gonna be fighting in Australia against George, right? So Bob has already done this in interviews. They're just wrapping it up. Lomachenko, I don't know what it is about him, but he seems to be an old media darling. No matter how many times he loses, if his performance is meh, meh, or subpar, like it was in the Jermaine Ortiz fight, old media, they still see the value in Lomachenko and he keeps getting opportunities and he keeps getting ranked. ESPN has Lomachenko ranked as the number one lightweight over Gervonta Davis, over Shakur Stevenson, and over anybody in the division. I don't really know how. I thought he lost to Jermaine Ortiz. He definitely lost to Teofimo, and he lost to Devin Haney. But I guess fans are holding on saying that Devin lost and all that, even though the judges didn't see it that way. But we know this is what old media does. Old media, they don't care what the official result was. Just like Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev. You had a contingent of old media and they just said, oh, Andre Ward lost the fight. Despite all three judges unanimously giving, it wasn't even a split decision, majority decision, a draw. Three judges said Andre Ward beat. They said he beat Kovalev. And that's not good enough for old media. They still want to just claim victories that didn't exist and say robbery. How is it a robbery and it's a close fight? So I don't want to get too sidetracked. Somehow, some way, Lomachenko remains to be one of old media's favorite fighters. And he still gets ranked. Where does Shakur Stevenson fit in into this whole mix? You know, I'll be interested to see what Shakur Stevenson decides to do next because I believe he's possibly a free agent and we don't know what, what that holds. But I'm looking at, see, one thing that's given me the ability to excel and succeed in this game of boxing is forward thinking. I've always been a big picture thinker and at the end of the day, that's what I do. You look at Tio Fimo, top rank is lining him up for Jermaine Ortiz, who fought Lomachenko. They're talking about right before Super Bowl. So that's two quality names, Tio Fimo Lopez, top rank, and Jermaine Ortiz, that could fight Shakur Stevenson, but they're going to be having their own battle. That's two names. You have Tio Fimo, Jermaine Ortiz, and I told you earlier in this video, Vasil Lomachenko and George Cambosos. So you have top rank four lightweights, four lightweights, and they all but have their fights announced, which begs the question, who is Shakur Stevenson gonna fight? Who is he gonna sign to if he is a free agent? I, I don't wanna get too much into that because I don't know, I don't have his contract before me or anything like that. So I'll wait for him to announce what his next move is promotionally if he is a free agent. But still, who is he going to fight? Tank Davis is likely going to fight on Amazon Prime. Plus, he's the A-side, so Shakur already mentioned that. I'm super curious what Top Rank decides to do with Shakur if they get him back for his next fight because everybody else's, their schedule is pretty much filled out. Devin already moved up to 140. He had three fights with Top Rank, and Shakur didn't get the fight or they didn't fight at that point. So... Now that he's in a new weight class, I feel like that fight's going to be harder to make. They're talking about Devin and Ryan Garcia anyway 
at this new weight class, 140 pounds. So again, my question is, who does Shakur fight? And further than that, Shakur's last performance was met with jeers. There were some people who weren't really impressed. I mean, even myself, I think Shakur is better than what was displayed versus Edwin De Los Santos. I mean, he could say he's the one hand bandit and all that, but at the end of the day, I think he has more to offer than this particular fight was able to showcase. And people said the fight was boring. I agree. You know, it just wasn't an enthralling, scintillating fight. So you're also coming off a bad performance, even though he's the WBC champion because the belt was vacated by Devin Haney. As I mentioned earlier, he was the first person to nab it. Tank will likely be elevated to a full body champion. Very curious to see what happens next for Shakur Stevenson in 2024, especially if he plans on staying at 135 and he kind of just got to 135. So that is the latest Lomachenko versus Cambosis. They're talking about Devin and Ryan possibly have negotiations. I made a video about that. Make sure you guys check that on the channel. Oscar De La Hoya said the ball is rolling and you know Tank Davis is the A-side so he'll announce his next fight. T.O. likely to fight Jermaine Ortiz. Got a video on that. So for all your boxing needs check out this video that YouTube wants you to see so you get caught up on all your boxing. Best in the business and it's not even close.